Hello and welcome to Switzer TV, I'm Peter Switzer. Today we want to look at the BHP buyback, a really significant buyback, Paul. Why are they doing it? Well, BHP's recently divested itself of its US uh, onshore oil, mm. and this is a way to return the proceeds to, to shareholders. Approximately, a, a capital return all up of about 10.2 uh, US billion dollars, been mm. coming back to shareholders. Half of that, 5.2 US billion, uh, will come back via an off-market buyback, yep. and 5.2 billion dollars, that's US dollars, will come back via uh, a special dividend later in the year. Okay, let's get into the details, the nitty-gritty of this buyback. Yeah, well, of course, it's, it's an off-market buyback, Peter. It's conducted uh, only available to Australian resident shareholders in the BHP Limited that company here in Australia. Mm. Uh, it'll be conducted at a discount of between 10 and 14% of the current market price. The uh, tenders for the buyback close on the 14th of December, and the buyback price will be announced on the 17th of December. That 5.2 billion US dollars, about 7.4 billion Australian dollars, mm. represents about se about seven and a half percent of BHP Limited's ordinary shares. So it's okay. a big buyback, Peter. Okay, so tell us what's so special about an off-market buyback. Yeah, so there are two types of buybacks. The on-market buyback, where you appoint a broker who buys shares on the ASX, uh, we're all familiar with that, but of course they end up buying at market price. That's one form of buyback. The other form of buyback is what's called an off-market buyback, and provided it meets some conditions laid down by the Australian Tax Office, it allows a company effectively to distribute a lot of its surplus franking credits back to its shareholders. Mm. Those franking credits are particularly valuable to some types of shareholders, and because of that, they're keen to accept. Yeah. It means that they'll actually offer their shares up at below market price, mm. in other words, tender at a discount to accept. Uh, so that makes it fair for all BHP shareholders because it's able to buy a lot more shares back for the same amount of capital. So that's what's special about an off-market buyback. It's that fully frank dividend that makes it attractive to the particularly low-rate taxpayers. And you, yeah. and you uh, will tell us who those people are. Yeah. Yeah. So how does it work? Look, shares will be purchased at a discount to the current market price mm. as a tender of you nominate a discount between 10 and 14%. The market price is, is determined about where BHP shares trade over the period between the 10th and the 14th of December. If, for example, the market price is, say, $34 over that period, it means that the buyback and the, and the, the successful discount is 14%. It means the buyback price will be $29.24. Of that $29.24, only $0.38 cents is actually deemed to be a capital component, and the remainder, $28.86, is actually deemed to be a fully frank dividend. Gee. So people will get a fully frank dividend, that capital return of $29.24, they'll get a capital component, a fully frank dividend, with that fully frank dividend will be attached to the relevant franking credits. That's what's gonna make it particularly attractive. From a capital gains tax purposes, Peter, it will be deemed as a sale. It also has a low effective sale price. This will be confirmed by the Australian Tax Office, but it will be in the order of about $5.14. And there will also be some benefits by being able to sell it, effectively dispose of it for a very low price for capital gains tax purposes. Now, I think a lot of people would find it very hard to understand all this, and that's why I always come back to you and say, who should buy it? Okay, two very easy rules. Mm. If your tax rate is 0%, this is, I mean, a buy, an off-market buyback is largely a tax transaction. Yeah. So it's particularly attractive to taxpayers paying zero rate tax or very low rate tax. Yep. Of course, they include things like self-managed super funds in pension mode, can be attractive to self-managed super funds uh, in accumulation mode. They're paying 15%. Yeah, and also if, if you're a taxpayer, an individual taxpayer, you've got some BHP shares, you don't pay much tax. Mm. If you're a high rate taxpayer, that's, for example, an individual paying tax at 47%, look, don't even think about it. Mm. Right? It's not gonna be attractive. So. I always say, even just throw the offer document in the bin. So yeah. it's really a tax transaction. It only works if your tax rate uh, is, is, is low. Yeah, okay. So you could, why don't you talk us through an example? Yeah, and this will really nail it home, Peter, and, and sh show you the benefits of the buyback. So let's, we've got an example on screen in front of you which shows the effect of accepting a buyback. Let's assume, for example, the market price is $34 and the successful tender discount is 14%. That means the actual buyback price is going to be $29.24. That'll comprise a, a, a capital component of $0.38 cents and a franc dividend of $28.86. Let's also assume that the, your cost price for your BHP shares is $15. Now we've got three examples uh, of different types of taxpayers. 
And we're comparing the example of either selling them on market now at $34 mm. or selling them into the buyback. If you're in pension mode, and that is a self-managed super fund in pension, if you sold your BHP shares on market, mm. you get $34. Yeah. If you sold them into the buyback, your, your effective return would be $41.61. So no isn't so it? So it's a no-brainer to accept. In accumulation mode, your effective sale price on market, you have to pay a little bit of capital gains tax, it would be $32.10. Off market, it would be $36.41. If you're a taxpayer paying tax at 47%, you've got to pay a bit more capital gains tax, so on market, $29.53. Off market, $24.55. Yeah. So yeah. doesn't make any sense to even think about accepting it. it's a bad transaction for a taxpayer who's paying tax at okay. 47%. Are there any other considerations you, you make people think about before they make the decision? Yeah, well, most importantly, of course, you're selling your BHP shares. Yep. So you've got to ask, do you want to do that? Yep. And if you do, what are you going to do once you've sold them? Mm. So, you know, are you going to buy them back on market again? That's one option. Sell stock into the into the tender, buy back those same shares on market. Could yep. be a good transaction. Yep. Or is it time to be exiting some BHP or is it time to be reinvesting in something else? So the first thing is what to do with the cash and do you want to sell your shares? Yep. Secondly, as we always say, Peter, this is a largely a tax transaction. That means you probably should, should seek independent advice from your accountant exactly. to, to confirm. And, and, and what we've said today may not be entirely appropriate to you. Uh, and thirdly, if you are thinking about participating, this is likely to be very popular with lots of uh, low-rate taxpayers. If you look at the recent uh, Rio off-market buyback, that was scaled back. We think this transaction is likely to go at a, file, at a discount of 14% because the dividend here is even more attractive. Uh, but if you don't want to do all the hard work, leave that to and somebody the else, the well. guesswork, and you can just tend to a final price, and that means you let the market decide what the actual is discount is. Is that what you're is. going to do? I'll be tendering final price. I don't need to think about this. Uh, of course, I won't be accepting in my own name, Peter, mm. but my self-managed super fund will be looking very closely at this. and. Uh, you know, I'm in accumulation mode, Peter, and I think I'll probably be accepting. Okay, great. That was very insightful.